دكتور مارك فيركلر هو مؤسس جامعة القيادة المسيحية وهو مشهور بتعليمه الثوري عن كيفية الاستماع إلى صوت الله منذ عام 1972 وهو يعلم جسد المسيح في ستة قارات عن كيفية الحياة نتيجة لعلاقة حميمية مع الروح القدس هذه المحاضرات عنوانها جلسات مشورة مع الله وفيها يعلمنا مارك كيف نحصل على الاستقرار النفسي عن طريق الاستماع إلى صوت الله ستتعلم كيف أن مشورة روح الله يمكن أن تقودك من الخوف إلى الإيمان ومن الشعور بالذنب إلى الرجاء ومن الغضب إلى المحبة المحاضرة السادسة بعنوان من الخوف إلى الإيمان We want to welcome you back to another session of Counseled by God. حب نرحب بكم في محاضرة جديدة من موضوع أخذت مشورة من الله. In this course, we allow the wonderful counselor to counsel our hearts. وفي الكورس ده بنسمح للمشير الرائع أن يشير على قلوبنا. Jesus said, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." يسوع قال توبة الأنقياء القلب لأنهم يعينون الله. And we said a pure heart is a heart defined as one full of faith, hope, and love. وعرفنا القلب النقي بأنه القلب المليان بالإيمان والرجاء والمحبة. And the opposites are fear and hopelessness and anger. وعكس كده هنلاقي الخوف والفشل والغضب. So in this session, I want to talk about moving from fear to faith. في المحاضرة دي أحب أتكلم عن إزاي نتحرك من الخوف للإيمان. Moving from fear to faith. التحرك من الخوف إلى الإيمان. Fear is when we incubate demonic negatives. الخوف عندما نحتضن أفكار سلبية شيطانية. And faith is when we incubate Holy Spirit positives. والإيمان عندما نحتضن أفكار إيجابية بالروح القدس. So fear produces and is involved with worry. والخوف بينتج قلق. So what do we worry about? اللي احنا الأنين عليه. There was one survey on worry which was very enlightening. كان في بحث عن القلق رائع جدا. And they said 40% of the things we worry about are things that never happen. بيقول إن 40% من الحاجات اللي احنا الأنين عليها عمرها ما بتحصل. 30% of the things we worry about are things that could not be changed. و30% من الحاجات اللي احنا قلقانين عليها حاجات ما نقدرش نغيرها. 12% of our worries are needless worries about our health. 12% قلق ملوش لازمه عن صحتنا. And 10% are miscellaneous petty worries. و10% مخاوف صغيره متنوعه. So only 8% of our worry time is really legitimate worry. و8% فقط من قلقنا هو اللي المفروض نقلقه. So 92 92% are a waste of time. 92% من قلقنا تضيع وقت. And even the 8% that's legitimate might still be a waste of time. وحتى لو 8% دي ليها لازمه لكن ده برضه تضيع وقت. Because in Philippians 4:6 It says, "Be anxious for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God." And in Philippians four six, it says, "Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God." So he says, "Be anxious for nothing, even the eight percent that was legitimate. Don't worry about that." عشان كده بيقول لا تهتموا بشيء حتى الثمانية في المية دول مش مفروض تهتموا بيهم. But take it to God in prayer. لكن خدها للرب في الصلاة. And supplication, with du'a, and thanksgiving, with shukr, and that should bring healing. With that, be yati be shifa. So is that a mechanical formula, or does that involve interaction with the Holy Spirit? هل دي وصفة ميكانيكية ولا دا علاقة مع الروح القدس? I think it's got to involve interaction with the Holy Spirit. أعتقد أنها علاقة مع الروح القدس. And I'd like us to go to one of the Psalms, which I think demonstrates this. عايزين نفتح مع بعض أحد المزامير اللي بيتكلم عن الموضوع ده. Psalm sixty-one. مزمور واحد وستين. Psalm sixty-one. مزمور واحد وستين. And we're going to watch David process some of his worry and anxiety. ونشوف قد إيه تعامل داود مع الخوف والقلق بتاعه. In the, he starts out by expressing his concern to God. We ابتدى بإنه يقول ألا أول الله. 
He said, hear my cry, O God. Give heed to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I'm calling to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I am. You have been a refuge to me. You have been a tower of strength against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take shelter in the take refuge in the shelter of your wings. And then he has something called a sila. Now a sila is a pause in the middle of your prayer. It's a, there's a musical crescendo. So David's probably playing some music in the background. And I think what he's doing is he's quieting his heart down in the presence of God. He's expressed himself to God. And now he's going to quiet himself down so God can speak back to him. And I think God did speak back to him. Because his tone after the sila is very different from his tone before the sila. Before the sila, he's crying out saying, God, lead me to someone stronger than me. He's saying, my heart is faint. Faint-hearted. I'm weak. So he expresses his weakness to God. Now, after the sila, look at the tone. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the inheritance to those who fear thy name. You will prolong the king's life. His years will be as many generations. He will abide before God forever. Appoint loving kindness and truth that they may preserve him. And finally, his response to the Lord. Verse 8, I will sing praise to your name forever. So would you agree that the tone of his prayer changed after the seal of time? Before it, he's saying, I'm faint-hearted, I'm broken, I'm crying out to you. And then he quiets himself and lets God speak into his spirit. And then he begins to speak forth what God is speaking into his spirit. God is saying, I've heard your vows. And so he says, God has heard my vows. God says, I've given you an inheritance. So he's saying, you have given me an inheritance. So he's now declaring what he has in God. So he's gone from a place of faint-heartedness to a place of declaration of what he's received from God. So I would say part one of this prayer is he's honestly pouring out his need to God. And part two of this prayer is he's quieting himself down and letting God speak back to him. And part three of this prayer 
he's declaring here's what God has said to me. والجزء الثالث من صلاته كان بيعلن ايه اللي الرب قاله له. And then the final verse would be part four of the prayer. والعدد الاخير هو الجزء الرابع من صلاته. It's his response. استجبته هو. He said, I'm going to worship God. الان هعبد الله. I'm going to sing praise to your name forever. أنا هكذا أرنم لإسمك إلى الأبد. This is a good prayer. ودي صلاة جميلة. It's a prayer that involves interaction between God and man. ودي صلاة بتعبر عن العلاقة اللي بين الله والإنسان. In the front part of his prayer, he's very honest with God. في الجزء الأمامي من صلاته كان بكل أمانة أمام الله. He's not saying, "I'm trying to be strong. God, help me be strong." ما قالش أنا بحاول أكون قوي يا رب ساعدني إن أكون قوي. He's coming and saying, "I am weak and I am busted and I'm a mess." جي أمام الرب وقال له رب أنا ضعيف أنا مدمر أنا مخش عليا. And I want you to see it's okay to do that. وأنا عايزك تشوف إن ده عادي إنك تعمل كده. It's okay to to go to God and tell Him exactly what where you're at. مهم إنك تيجي قدام الله وتقول له أنت فين واقف بالضبط. You can go and say, "God, I'm angry." وتقدر تروح للرب وتقول له رب أنا غضبان. Some of the prophets even said, "I'm angry with you, God." وبعض الأنبياء راحوا للرب قالوا رب إحنا غضبانين منك. Because you tell me you're righteous and you're just, and look at the heathens surround the righteous. تقول لي إنك أنت بار وإنك أنت عادل. انظر الأمم إزاي يحصرون الأبرار. And how can you call that righteous and just? A God, when you're allowing the wicked people to surround the righteous people. وزي إله عادل وبار زيك يسمح للأمم إنهم يحصروا شعبك. And so the prophets would even express their anger to God. والأنبياء كانوا بيعبروا عن غضبهم لله. Even the anger that they personally had towards God, they would express that to Him. حتى الغضب الشخص اللي كان جواهم ضد الله كانوا بيعبروا به لله. So I want you to do that with God. When I ask you to do that with Allah, I want you to be real. And I ask you to be real. Don't wash yourself up and come and present yourself to God. Ma tgish tghsil nafsak wa tigi tuqaf uddam Allah. Because that's called religion. And the day is mutadayun. You just go to God and be completely real. فقط إذهب لله وإنت حقيقي تماما. And if you're mad at Him, say, God, I'm mad at you. ولو إنت هتتجنن منه قل ربنا هتجنن منك. Because if we're real, God can meet us and touch our hurts. لا نحن لو حقيقيين الله يتقبل معنا وهي المسكروحنا. And if we're not real, it's very hard for God to meet us and touch our hurts. لكن لو إحنا مش حقيقيين هيبقى صعب الله إنه يتقبل معنا وهي المسكروحنا. If I'm wearing a facade, God can only get to my facade. لو أنا ارتديت قناع الله يصل إلى هذا القناع. So you don't need to clean yourself up before you come to God in prayer. مش محتاج تنظف نفسك قبل ما تدخل لله في الصلاة. If you're if you're faint-hearted and if you're full of fear, say, God, I'm full of fear. لو أنت قلبك مخش علي ومليان بالخوف قل ربنا مليان بالخوف. And get it off your chest. وطلع اللي جواك زي ما هو. And then quiet yourself down and have a seal of time. وبعد كده اهدى وخد وقت سلام. That's where I'm going to journal. وده الوقت اللي هكتب فيه. And I and I'm going to let God speak to me and say, Mark, I am your strength. وخلي الله يتكلم إليه ويقول لي يا مارك أنا قوتك. I am your inheritance. You can trust me. أنا ميراثك تقدر تثق فيا. And I'm writing these things out. وأنا بكتب الكلام ده. Just like David is writing those things out in his psalm. زي ما داود كان بيكتب الحاجات دي في المزمور بتاعه. It's a good kind of praying. نوع رائع من الصلاة. It involves you interacting with God and responding back to God. بيخليك تكون في علاقة مع الله وبتتجاوب معه. It's a good way to heal a broken heart. ودي طريقة جيدة لشفاء القلب المنكسر. And when it's all done, you erupt in praise and worship and say, "God, thank you. You've healed me one more time." وبعد ما تخلص الصلاة هتلاقي نفسك تتسبح وتمجد وتقول رب أنت شفتني مرة تانية. And God doesn't get tired of healing us one more time. والله مش بيتعب إنه يشفينا مرة تانية. He is glad for us to bring our weakness to His throne of grace and receive strength. هو بيبقى سعيد لما منيك بضعفتنا قدام عرش نعمته ونأخذ إيوة من عنده. He's not asking me to clean myself up. هو عمره ما سألني إني أنظف نفسي قبل ما أجيله. 
He's just saying, Mark, come and be real. هو بيقول لي مارك تعالى وخليك زي ما انت. And I can meet you and I can change you. وانا هتقابل معاك وهقدر اغيرك. So there's several ways we can hear from God. في طرق كتيرة نقدر نسمع بيها صوت الله. The way I like the best is to journal. وأحسن طريقة أنا بحبها إنك تكتب. I quiet myself down, fix my eyes on Jesus. بهدي نفسي في محضر الله، بثبت نظري على يسوع. And then I tune to spontaneity and I write out what's coming back to me. وبتفتح على التلقائية وبكتب كل اللي هو بيقوله لي. And if I'll journal for five minutes in the morning, it will heal up messes in my heart. ولو أنا بقضي خمس دقايق كل يوم كتابة ده بيشفي أعماق قلبي. And I encourage each one to do that. وأنا بشجع كل شخص إنه يعمل كده. Of course, another way God can speak to us. وطريقة تانية الله بيتكلم بها لينا. As you read scripture, verses leap off the page and hit you between the eyes. وانت بتقرا الكتاب المقدس في شاهد كده تلاقيه قفز من الكتاب ولمس قلبك. That's also considered a rhema word. وده بيدعى كلمة الريما. So that's a great way for God to speak to you. ودي من اعظم الطرق اللي الله بيتكلم بيها لحياتنا. And he can speak to the council of other people. وايضا بيتكلم لينا من خلال المشيرين اللي حوالينا. Because we're part of a body of Christ and God ministers one to another through each other. لان احنا جزء من جسد المسيح والله بيستخدمنا في ان احنا نخدم احدنا الاخر. Now when God heals us, عندما يشفينا الله, here's what's happening. ده اللي بيحصل. We're bringing in the light of God. احنا بنحضر نور الله. And it's driving out the darkness in our lives. ودي حاجة بتطرد الظلمة اللي في حياتنا. I used to directly attack the darkness myself. أنا كنت متعود إن أنا أطرد الظلمة بنفسي. And I would come against the darkness. وإني أجي ضد الظلمة. And I would say, anger, I hate you, leave. وأقول للغضب يا غضب أنا بكرهك أخرج. But it didn't work very well. لكن عمر ده ما نفع. Because my anger would be considered darkness or sin. لأن الغضب ده يعتبر خطية أو ظلمة في حياتي. And God's love is considered light. ومحبة الله تعتبر نور. So how do I drive darkness out of a room? إزاي أنا أقدر أطرد الظلمة من غرفة ما? If you walk into a room that's pitch dark at midnight, do you kick the darkness out? إذا دخلت غرفة مظلمة في منتصف الليل هل بتطرد الظلمة خارجا؟ Do you swing at it and push against it? هل بتبتدي تدفعها وتخرجها خارجا؟ If you did that, they'd lock you up in a mental institution. أعتقد لو عملت كده يحطوك في مستشفى الأمراض العقلية. How do I get the darkness out of a room? إزاي أطرد الظلمة من الغرفة؟ I turn the light on. بولع النور. And the way I turn the light on inside of my heart is I say, Jesus, what do you want to say to me about this? And Jesus said, Mark, I've taken your anger and I've circumcised it out of your heart. And I've given you a new heart and a new spirit and and that new heart and new spirit is full of love. والقلب الجديد والروح الجديد مليانين بالحب. And I want you to see what I'm doing towards this person. وانا عايزك تشوف انا هعمل ايه تجاه هذا الشخص. See I'm putting my arm around their shoulder. انا بحط كده ايدي على كتفه. And I'm holding them close. وبقربه مني. And I'm ministering grace to their broken heart. وبعد كده باجي بنعمتي على قلبه المكسور. And that's what I want you to do. وده اللي انا عايزك انت تعمله. I want you to put your arm around him and just hug him. عايزك تحط كده ايديك حواليه وتحضنه. Okay, that's bringing the light in. ده كده انا بحضر النور الى حياتي. So now I'm not trying to drive my anger out. I'm letting God's voice bring light into my inner being. انا مش بحاول اطرد الغضب خارجا لكن انا بسمح لمحبة الله انها تنور في حياتي فتطرد الغضب. I turn the light switch on by journaling and saying, God, what do you want to say to me? إني بولع النور بإني أقعد أكتب وأقول يا رب عايز تقول لي إيه. And as he speaks, light pours into and invades my heart. وهو بيتكلم النور بيأتي وبيملى قلبي. In the early years of my Christian life, I couldn't hear God's voice. في أول سنين من حياتي الروحية ما كنتش أدرى أسمع صوت الله. 
and it was very hard to bring the light in by hearing his voice. And so I used to attack darkness within me. I would fix my eyes on my anger and my weakness and I would beat it. And I would say, Mark, you shouldn't be so angry. Anger, leave. Anger, leave. And I'm attacking darkness. And here's what the Lord spoke into my journal. He, he said, Mark, whatever you fix your eyes on grows within you. And whatever grows within you, you become. And so, if I fix my eyes on anger, then anger grows within me, and I become more angry. If I fix my eyes on my weakness, weakness grows within me, and I become weaker. If I fix my eyes on Jesus, Jesus grows within me, and I become Christ-like. Now that transformed my Christian experience. Because no longer do I directly attack sin. I come to Jesus, I hear what he's saying, and I say, yes, Lord. And, it, and so there's no more direct attack on sin. One year the Lord told me to spend a year just focused on abiding in Christ. Just seeing Jesus present with me all the time, all day long. And so I worked on developing that skill for an entire year. At the end of that year, the Lord pointed something out to me. He said, you know these battles with sin that you've had that you could not win? He said, those sin issues have just diminished into the background. Without you giving any attention to them at all. I gave my attention to abiding in Christ. Which brought the light in. And the darkness was dispelled as a byproduct. So for me, there's no more frontal attack on sin. My goal is to see Jesus with me, and if I see that, everything else will take care of itself. I'd like us to go to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And we're going to pick a story up in verse 20. It's a story of Elijah at uh, Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. And King Ahab is there. He's an evil king. And there's a contest. Because the prophet, uh, the prophet Elijah had called for a drought which had gone on for several years. And now the drought was about ready to come to an end. Ahab was angry with Elijah because there had been a drought for three years in the land. And so Elijah said, bring forth the prophets of Baal and we'll have a contest. We'll see who God really is. And 
and verse 21, Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long are you going to hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. And the people wouldn't answer him a word. They would not make up their minds. فلم يجبه الشعب بكلمة. And um, so he said, "How long are you going to hesitate between two opinions?" وعاد يقول لهم إلى متى تعرجون بين الفرقتين. Elijah said to the people, "I alone am left as a prophet of the Lord, and Baal's prophet are four hundred and fifty people." ثم قال إلي للشعب أنا بقيت نبيا للرب وحدي وأنبياء البعل أربعة مئة وخمسون رجلا. He said, let's have a contest. We'll find out who God is. We'll take two oxen. And you can put one on your altar, I'll put one on my altar. And you can call on your God for fire to come down and consume it. I'll call on my God for fire to come down and consume my, my gift. And whichever God answers with fire, that's the true God. And the prophets of Baal said, that's a good contest. So they... Call for fire and no fire came. In verse 26, about halfway through the verse, they say, O Baal, answer us, but there was no voice. No voice. Because their God wasn't the living God. That's the difference between all false gods and the true living God. Our God lives. Our God speaks to us. We hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. That's what lets us stand different from all other religions in the world. And that's why I want you to hear the voice of God so you can be a demonstration of the differentness of Christianity. Well, since fire didn't come down for them, then Elijah says, okay, I'll do my side. He said, before I call for fire to come down, let's dump some water on this. And they dumped barrels of water on it. And then he called for fire to come down. And fire came down. And it was a powerful demonstration. And so then, what do we do next? They bring all 450 prophets of Baal to the creek. Uh, and Elijah kills 450 false prophets with a sword that day. And then in verse 41 of chapter 18, Elijah says to Ahab, you can go up and eat and drink because there's a sound of a roar of a heavy shower. Now we've just had a drought for several years. Where is the sound of the roar of this heavy shower? You can't hear it with your physical ears. He can hear it in his spirit. Just like you and I can hear things from God in our spirit. And so verse 42, Ahab goes up to eat and drink, but Elijah goes to the top of Mount Carmel. 
and he crouches down on the earth and he puts his face beneath his between his knees he is praying intensely can be salli baharara he wants to birth out of his spirit a miracle into the three dimensional world can be hawl yawlid fi ruhu mu'jiza lil alam al maddi and um, he tells his servant to go and check to see if there's a cloud wal ghulam ruh wa izhab wa tatalla wa shuf law fi sahaba and after seven times the servant comes back and said there's a small cloud the size of a man's hand wa ba'd sab'a marrat al ghulam rija' wa qal hunaka sahaba qad rakaf and he said okay that's it there's a shower coming wa qal huwa da lana mustani fi matar jay and sure enough a shower comes wa bil fa'l al matar ata it's a heavy shower the bible says kan matar azim yaqul al kitab and the drought is ended wa al jafaf intaha and that's still not the end of the day wa da mish nihayat al yawm in verse 46 <laughs> the hand of the lord was on elijah and he girded up his loins and he outran ahab to jezreel wa kanat yad al rabb ala eliya fa shadda haqawayhi wa rakada amam ahab hatta taji ila yezreel that's a 20 18 to 20 mile run da hawali min 18 la 20 mile this is a pretty successful day of ministry wa da yawm najah jiddan fi khidmatu this guy calls down fire from heaven الراجل ده طلب ان تاتي نار من السماء he kills 450 false prophets وقتل 450 نبي من انبياء البعض he ends a three year drought ووقف ثلاث سنين جفاف and he outruns a horse 20 miles وبعد كده ابتدى يجري لمسافه 20 مايل now if that had happened in your and my life i would consider that a successful day of ministry ولو ده حصل في حياتي انا اعتبر ده يوم خدمه ناجح جدا جدا i would say i am a man of faith and power هقول ان انا رجل ايمان وقوه and i'm going to trust god for at least the next day or two وعلى الاقل هثق في الله لمده يوم او يومين but he doesn't do that لكن هو ما عملش كده he moves into fear almost instantly وفي الحال اتحول للخوف Mighty man of faith becoming a mighty man of fear in just moments of time. رجل الايمان القوي تحول الى رجل خوف قوي في لحظات. How does that happen? ازاي ده حصل؟ Because if I can understand how it happened maybe I can keep it from happening to me. لاني لو فهمت ازاي ده بيحصل هقدر امنعه انه يحصل في حياتي. So how does one become a mighty man of fear? ازاي شخص يتحول الى رجل خوف قوي؟ Well let's go to chapter 19 verse 2. خلينا نروح لاصحاح 19 وعدد 2. Now Jezebel who is the king's wife she's a wicked queen. Isabel زوجة الملك كانت ملكة شريرة. When she hears that that the prophets have all been killed by Elijah. عندما سمعت ان كل انبياء البعل قتلوا بواسطة ايليا. She speaks a negative rhema word straight from the pit of hell. ابتدت تتكلم كلمة ريما شيطانية من الجحيم. In verse 2 she says this. فعدد 2 قالت كده. So may the gods do to me and even more if I don't make your life as a life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. هكذا تفعل الآلهة وهكذا تزيد إن لم أجعل نفسك كنفس واحد منهم في نحو هذا الوقت غدا. She said, "I'm going to kill you." بتقول كده أنا هقتلك. And he let that negative demonic word sink into his heart. هو سمح لهذه الكلمات السلبية الشيطانية إنها تدخل إلى قلب. He could have put up a shield of faith and said, "You can't touch me." كان ممكن يحط ترس الإيمان ويقول لها أنت مش تقدر تلمسيني. I'm a child of God and you can't do a thing to me. أنا ابن الله وأنت مش تقدر تعملي أي حاجة لي. He could have resisted the rhema word from Satan. هو كان يقدر يزيح كلمة الريمة دي من الشيطان. But instead he lets it sink into his heart. لكن هو سمح ليها انها تدخل وتتعمق في قلبه. And in verse 3 he's afraid and he rose and ran for his life. وفي عدد 3 هو خاف وقام ومضى لاجل نفسه. A mighty man of faith is full of fear and running. رجل الايمان القوي تحول الى رجل خوف وابتدى يجري. So he goes out into the wilderness. ذهب إلى البرية. He sits down underneath a juniper tree. وجلس تحت رتمة. And he says, "Lord, I just want to die." وقال له رب أنا عايز أموت. 
It's enough now, Lord. Just take my life. قد كفى الآن يا رب خذ نفسي. I'm no better than my fathers. لأنني لست خيرا من أبائي. All right, he's depressed. هو هنا مكتئب. No longer, he doesn't have a pure heart. ما عندوش كده قلب نقي. So how do you get healed? إزاي يتشفي؟ Well, first of all, exactly how did he get so depressed? الأول إزاي هو أصبح مكتئب جدا. Step number one is he dropped his shield of faith. أول حاجة هو نزل طرس الإيمان. Also, he was physically exhausted. وكان جسديا مرهق جدا. He worked himself to the bone that day in the ministry. واشتغل حتى العظام في هذا اليوم في الخدمة. And we need to know that we should not exhaust ourselves physically. وأنا محتاجين نعرف إن إحنا ما نرهقش أنفسنا جسديا. And if we do, we're susceptible to demonic attack. لو إحنا عملنا كده هنبقى مفتوحين على هجوم الأرواح الشريرة. And so we need to probably go and rest physically. عشان كده محتاجين نرتاح جسديا. All right. So if you want to move into fear, you become exhausted physically. ولو أنت مرهق جسديا ده هيحركك للخوف. And allow a demonic rhema word to enter into your heart. يسمح لكلمات الريما الشيطانية أن تدخل إلى قلبك. And you act on it. وتتحرك بناء عليها. So how do you get healed of fear? إزاي تشفي من الخوف? Well, he goes out and takes a nap. هيروح وينام. So if you're exhausted, go take a nap. ولو أنت مرهق روح نام. And then he eats some food. بعد كده ابتدى يأكل. So he strengthens his natural body. وابتدى يقوي جسده المادي. Then he took a second nap. بعد كده نام كما كمان مرة. And he and he ate some more food. وأكل مرة كمان. So part of your spiritual reserves are just getting rested up. وجزء من استردادك الروحي إنك ترتاح. And you say, yeah, but I gotta be out there fighting the devil. وتقول أنا عايز أقف علشان أحارب الشيطان. I say, no, go take a nap. You'll feel better. لا روح نام شوية تحس إنك أفضل. And I didn't know that taking a nap was part of Christian spirituality, but it is. وما كنتش عارف إني إني أنام شوية ده جزء من الحياة الروحية لكن أنا اكتشفت كده. So now he's rested. Now he's fed. ودلوقتي هو ارتاح وكل. And in chapter 19, verse 9, he goes to a cave and he lodges there. وفي أصحاح 19 عدد 9 دخل إلى مغارة وبات فيها. And now we can hear the word of the Lord again because he's rested up. وابتدى يسمع بعد كده صوت الرب لأنه هو مرتاح. And the Lord's going to try to heal him up by feeding him a, a good, positive rhema word. والرب هيحاول يشفي بأن هو يديله كلمات ريما إيجابية. And the word of the Lord came to him and said, "What are you doing here, Elijah?" وكان كلام الرب إليه يقول له ما لك ها هنا يا إليا. Isn't that interesting? مش ده شيء مصير. I mean, God knows what Elijah is doing there. الله عارف إليا بيعمله هنا. He's hiding in fear. هو مستخبى من الخوف. So God's not asking the question for His benefit. الله مش بيسأل السؤال ده علشانه. He's asking the question for Elijah's benefit. لكن هو بيسأل السؤال ده عشان إليا يفهم. He wants to draw Elijah into a dialogue with him. هو بيجذب إليا لحديث متبادل معه. Because if if Elijah can dialogue with him and hear a rhema word, that can heal his heart. لأن لو إليا أرب منه ابتدى يسمع كلمات ريما ده يشف قلبه. So in verse ten we have a response from Elijah. وفي عدد عشرة نسمع إجابة إليا. He said, "I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts." فقال قد غرت غير للرب إله الجنود. And well, that's true. ده حقيقة. And the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down the altars, killed your prophets with a sword, and that was true. لأن بني إسرائيل قد تركوا عهدك ونقضوا مذابحك وقتلوا أنبياءك بالسيف وده حقيقة كمان. And I alone am left. فبقيت أنا وحدي. That's not true. ودي مش حقيقة. We have a demonic lie mixed into his thought process. وهنا هنلاقي كذبة شيطانية مخلوطة في ذهنه. And they seek my life to take it away. وهم يطلبون نفسي ليأخذوها. That's true. وده حقيقة. Eighty-five percent true, fifteen percent lie. خمسة وثمانين في المية حق وخمسة عشر في المية كذب. He's incubating, incubating a demonic negative. وهو هنا بيحتضن فكرة سلبية شيطانية. And so the Lord gives him some instruction. He says, "Go and stand in front of the mountain of the Lord, so I can minister to you." فقال أخرج وقف على الجبل أمام الرب. And a wind comes by, and God's not in the wind. فأتت ريح عظيمة والرب لم يكن في الريح. 
And there's an earthquake and a fire, but God's not in them. Finally, a gentle blowing. And uh, that's the voice of God. And verse 13, at the end of the verse, he says the same question again. What are you doing here, Elijah? And in verse 14, Elijah repeats exactly the same words he said the first time. He's repeating the movie in his mind. And the movie contains a satanic lie in it. Alright, that he's the only one left. That's not true. And God wants to remove that lie from his heart and mind. And so now the Lord's going to have to exhort him. And I mentioned to you that exhortation is a lot gentler when God does it. He doesn't say, you miserable failure, you're my man of the hour, and you're hiding. What's wrong with you? He doesn't say, you should have stood in faith, you've now embarrassed my name. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He says, the Lord says in verse 15, He says, Return. And at the end of the verse, He said, Anoint Haziel king over Aram. He says, get busy in the ministry again. And when God does that to me, I say, God, don't you want to hit me? I've just been a miserable failure here. And God said, no, Mark, I don't want to hit you. I say, God, hit me. I'll feel better. He said, Mark, let it go. I know your frame. I know your weak. I know your dust. That's okay. That doesn't bother me. I made you that way. So I've learned that God is unconditional love, and you'll learn that too as you journal. And in verse 18, God corrects the lie that's going through his mind. He says, yet I'm going to leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal. So he removes the, uh, the lie and he recommissions them back into the ministry. And that's all there was to it. He is so much gentler than I ever dreamed he was. And as you journal, you're going to find the same thing is true in your life. I used to be busy looking at my sin, and God was looking at my potential and my ministry. God said, Mark, don't look at your sin. I never told you to look at your sin. I told you to look at me. And that, that way you can reflect me. And so I've learned how to be a mighty man of faith. I go to God, I get a rhema word from Him. I let it grow and develop within me. I fix my eyes on it. And I ponder, I let it revolve in my mind. I play pictures and movies in my mind that have truth in them.
100% truth, not 85% truth. 100% حق, مش 85% حق. And as you journal, God will remove the lies from the movies in your mind. He has removed hundreds of lies from the movies in my mind. And I want him to do it for you also. So I'm going to ask you to do some journaling. And say, Lord, talk to me about fear versus faith. Are there any areas of my life that I look at and I feel fear? I say, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? Because those are areas that have fear in them. So Lord, show me what those areas are. And the Lord, speak to me about those areas. What do you want to say about my what ifs? Will you give me a rhema word that will remove the lie and give, replace it with truth? I want your light to come in and drive out my darkness. So why don't you just take a week and just journal through all the what ifs you have in your life. And let God give you truth which you begin to confess and say, this is the truth of my life. So let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you that you're a loving God. We thank you that our weakness doesn't bother you at all. All I have to do is bring my weakness to you and allow you to heal it. So Lord, today we're bringing our what-ifs to you. Our fears and our doubts, we're bringing them to you. And say, Lord, what do you want to say about this fear and this doubt? And then Lord, we'll quiet ourselves down and fix our eyes upon you. And we'll tune to spontaneity and we'll write out what you're saying to us. And we'll take that word and we'll submit it to our advisors. And as they confirm it, we'll say, this is what the Lord has said. And our lives will be moved, healed from fear. And we'll become mighty children of faith. Father, we'll give you the glory for what you do in our lives. Because you make us something that we could never be on our own. So we worship you, the true and the living God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen.